thank you so much to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode of Making Moves. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, takes your insurance and are available when you need them. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc and I'm one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to find and book a quality doctor. Go to ZocDoc.com slash moves and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash moves. ZocDoc.com slash moves. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Making Moves. I'm here today with my ex roommate. Exes. <laughs> the drama. T drama, Peyton Sarton. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me, TK. Thanks for coming on, Peyton. I, I love that we use our podcast as an excuse to hang out now. I know. Uh, she came <laughs> on my podcast like, last week. So and go listen. Go listen. It's note to self by Peyton Sarton. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, we can't. Like we do we like talk. we do like small talk, very small talk before, and then we can get into like the good stuff. Because uh-huh. I just like always want to, you know, you just want to get the good stuff. On, I know on, I, it's for content on record. Yeah. yeah. So Peyton, how are you? I I feel like Peyton is the queen of just like living her best life always, and even if it doesn't, even if it's not her best life in real life, it looks like it. Yeah, it does look like my best life. I will say I'm also I think I'm good not to toot my own horn at. Even when I'm not living my best life, like yes. making the making the not living the best life like purposeful. No, you are. Like I learned something from not living my best life, mm-hmm. but I'm also very just. I think about things too much, mm-hmm. which is a blessing and a curse. So when something bad happens, I'm like, okay, it's because of this, and like this means I can do this better and to avoid <laughs> this happening. And like, oh, that was my fault. Like I just go into a whole thing. Uh-huh. You know. I love it. Um, well, I learned so much from you living with you. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I learned some of the best, like, just pieces of advice on, like, how to thrive in your 20s, living in your 20s, um, dating advice. Like, yes. I-, I feel like we had some good talks while we were roommates. You were we by did. far my favorite roommate I've ever had. <laughs> Same. Ditto. Honestly, thank you. I um, feel like we had that, like, it's not even necessarily because I'm wise or I'm you know, smart in any way. Um, I'd like to think so, but I think it's just because like, it's nice to have someone who is just a few steps ahead of you or just a few years ahead of you in a similar position going through life who can be like, oh, this just happened to me and I just had time to reflect on X, Y, and Z mistakes or these Mm -hmm. are the good things I did. And just like kind of, it's like a big sister kind of relationship. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it was so, I don't know if people like really know this, but when Peyton and I moved in with each other, we had no idea. We had never met. No. Like we, we met the day we moved in. Yeah. But thank God for our friends like Kenzie, Haley, Ringo, people that knew mu- mutually both of us. Yes. Um, they both guessed, I think, each each other up to the no, two I will of say, us. I think some of them were like, I don't know how this is going to work because y'all have different personalities. But I think we overlap in the same way. Yeah, I agree. In a good way. Like we're talking about not being touchy. Yeah. For example, that was like one that's like. Imagine if like you were super touchy and I wasn't and mm-hmm. like we lived together for a year and a half and you're always because this happened to me in the past. Like people were so offended or thought that I like weirdly hated them when I'm just like not a touchy person. And uh-huh. it just like caused like angst almost <laughs> in the house. And I'm like, I I'm wish I could touchy. be touchy. Like I wish. Yeah. But like little things like that, they they kind of just exacerbated any like not I don't want to say issues, but like any mm. kind of like pressures or anything like that in a house. So I feel like. In those types of ways, there were a couple ways we really overlapped. Definitely. I feel like also, too, just like our general outlook on life, like the things we we have similarities and what we actually give a shit about and actually don't give a shit about. Like Mm -hmm. we don't sweat the small things. We like I don't know. Like I understand if you're having a bad day, your shit's going to be a mess and Mm -hmm. vice versa. Like, I don't know. We're not like that nitpicky of people. And I feel like there's a mutual respect. Like I have a ton of respect for Peyton, like how she runs her business and her relationships and everything. So like it just made it the living experience very enjoyable. Like it was genuinely the best roommate situation I've had. Good roommate chemistry. Mm -hmm. Good roommate chemistry. Anyway. Let's start with where you're at right now, or I guess Mm -hmm. give a little brief elevator pitch for people that don't know you for some reason. Elevator pitches are not my thing. (laughs) I'm not, I'm not like a short, you know, like quippy kind of person. So I'm Peyton. Um, I have been like in the influencer realm for 
six years now. I started a blog Mm -hmm. back in college, uh, originally to get an internship, and then it turned into a job. Um, And since then, it's gone from, you know, blog to Instagram. When Snapchat was a thing, I'm no longer on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Um, Just all the things. I'm hearing it's It's back, but again, it's too many fucking things. Yeah, it's too many things. I can't do it. I'm trying to simplify my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So Snapchat, also my Snapchat got hacked. Oof. a long time ago Mine did too. and i literally was just like i yeah. don't care anymore um yeah so i from instagram to tiktok to now podcast i have a podcast called note to self like i said um which is my favorite platform i don't know if it would if it's yours or not i feel like you're still a youtube girly like at heart i think yeah, these are so different like making moves yeah. and like i feel like this is like i see it more as like businessy its own thing like Mm -hmm. youtube is so personal to me yeah it is i do i do youtube as well i've slowed down with that Mm -hmm. um just because i wanted to take more time to make better content Mm -hmm. and i feel like you're someone i always think of because like maybe i helped you in certain ways like when it comes to like life stuff but like with work i feel like you were always it's just inspiring to be around someone with an energy like I had when I first moved to LA. Like mm. I was like work, work, work. I was so excited. So it kind of like revived that for me. And when I think about YouTube now, I know that like maybe consistency is really important. I was just thinking about this today. But for me, I'm like, I'm gonna if I if I do something every single week, I know the you know, end result isn't gonna be the greatest. And I was doing that for a little while mm-hmm. and I would look at the vlogs and be like, these are good, but like you can it's they're not bad. They just it wasn't exactly what I wanted. Yeah. And it wasn't like an exact depiction of myself. So mm-hmm. anyway, I started doing like once every two weeks and it like is amazing. Mm-hmm. And so I keep le- leaning back on your advice being like, <laughs> OK, like you just you need to make sure you're promoting it properly, but you don't need to be every, you know, once a week or anything mm-hmm. like that. That was a tangent. But that was that's something okay. I, that's was something I learned from you Okay, um, that I wanted to flag. <laughs> um, but anyway, I've been doing social media for a really long time. Um, I lived here in L.A. from age 22 to 28. I just turned 28 when I left. Me and TK lived together for like a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And um, I moved away to live in, to move with my boyfriend, the first man I've ever lived with. Shout out Joe. Shout out to Joe. We love Joe. We we do love Joe. He's been extra cute lately. So The I, pictures I you him. posted of him as a baby. The cutest I was baby. like, Literally the cutest <laughs> baby of all time. <laughs> like the cheeks and the dimples. And then the one of you guys both like, as children with the cake. Yes. I was like, I was I'm like, obsessed with them. I got to do a side by side. Um, yeah, so I met Joe two over two years ago, and I'm a very hyper independent person, which is another thing I think we have in common. Mm-hmm. Um, started dating him, which was pretty life changing for me because I just 100%. hadn't really had a boyfriend up to the age of 26 mm-hmm. <laughs> that was like a real boyfriend. Um, and so I moved in with him in December. We've been all around because he plays baseball uh, for his job. And he was in D.C. with the Washington Nationals this last season. So I was in D.C. And then we're back in L.A. for the off season. Mm-hmm. And, that's and you were just in Texas stuff. before that. Yeah. So I grew up in Texas. Um, I went to Texas A&M University. I, you know, I was a different person back then. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, I'm from Texas. That's where I say I'm from, at least. My dad was a military guy for a long time, so we moved quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, And I consider myself a Texan, though. Though California, the more I'm, you know... We we tried to last off season. Joe and I were like, let's move to Dallas and do the Dallas thing. We bought a house. We were like, we're going to settle down. Once we moved there, we're both like... It's just not our vibe. Uh-huh. Um, I'm from Fort Worth, which like this, the thing between Fort Worth and Dallas, like there's like a, a little bit of a competition there. Oh really? And if, like you're from Fort Worth. Like you're like, ew, Dallas. And if you're mm. from Dallas, you're like, what even is Fort Worth? Like it's just a whole different thing. Uh-huh. Um, and it's also freezing. Joe hated the cold, but I do. I'm kind of sad. We don't have our house in Dallas anymore. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we were there. We, we've been all over the place. I moved like four times since December of last year i think the cool thing though about you that you've taught me is like nothing's permanent Mm -hmm. you can buy a house and decide you don't want the house anymore like you know what i mean like i feel like in my head i'm like am i gonna get a dog am i gonna get a house am i gonna yeah like in my head it's such a big deal am i gonna get a boyfriend like you can date someone for a month and realize that's not your vibe yeah you know or like or you know buy a house and you're just gonna have to sell it like that's yeah. just how life works sometimes you gotta move with the punches and i think yeah. joe was really good at that i'm more like you where i'm i'm very very intentional mm-hmm. we got in a conversation like two days ago about this because he was just like i noticed he just like does stuff like mm-hmm. he 
he does what he needs to do. So in terms of like, he doesn't procrastinate things usually. Um, he like will do whatever is on his to-do list for that day. I will say like his to-do lists are very short. <laughs> <laughs> it's like go to gym. Yeah, goes to PT. <laughs> Train. Yeah. yeah, comes home, plays video games. <laughs> like he might have like one, like go to the grocery store uh-huh. or something. He's definitely the one that takes care of like the administrative duties in the relationship. Good. Um, because I work a lot and Joe like works out and then, you know, comes yeah. home. A lot of a lot of extra mental time, I guess. Um, but he was I was like, I just do everything with intention. So like every move I make, like if I'm gonna drink water, I'm drinking water so I can be more hydrated, so I can do this, so I can uh, yeah. putting minerals in it. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything yeah. is so on purpose and I don't say things that I don't mean. Like I just and let, like there's been a couple times I have in my life. But like other than that, like I remember those times because uh-huh. I'm like, oh, my God, even if I say mean things, I'm like, I meant them. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about those things yeah. for a while. Um, but yeah, I I'm just very intentional. Joe is relaxed. Mm-hmm. So he is the kind of person that teaches me those kinds of things like being like, OK, it's not a big deal. We can sell it or we can move or we can do whatever. I'm like, you're right. <laughs> well, he's used You're to right. that lifestyle in a way, you he know. Is. Yeah, and he he doesn't. I mean, he just doesn't stress. And I make I like make things stressful, like because I think sometimes when you think like that, it's a you're making things more stressful than they need to be. Uh huh. It nothing is permanent, <laughs> like you said. Yes. So like it's you can do whatever the fuck you want mm-hmm. to a certain extent. Obviously, but. I I think that's so true. I that reminds me of like if people people are like, how are you doing everything? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just my life. Yeah. Like it's just, doing it. Yeah. It's just <laughs> my, I have to, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's kind of like with you, it's like, okay, uh, God forbid Joe gets traded or whatever. It's yeah. just like, that's just your life. It's people just like, happening. How do you do that? You're like, well, that's my life. I don't really have an option. Like yeah. I signed up for it. We're doing it. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm kind of like, how do you not do stuff? Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? How do I deal with my life? I just, things are happening and I just have to deal with them as they're happening. I don't mm-hmm. know. You just have to do your best, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So Peyton, you were s- basically single until you were 26. I had like two relationships. I will say one was more of like, it was a relationship that I was too scared to call a relationship, like too scared to call my boyfriend, but mm-hmm. we did everything you do in a relationship with our families, with our, I mean, oh, celebrating wow. things together. We went through a lot of hard times together, but I was 19 and I was just like, I don't know. The the word boyfriend really freaked me out. So we would just say we were, I, I would say we were dating. <laughs> Which is just like, whatever. Um, I had some problems with commitment, I think. That's so Peyton. So me. Um, but I, he was the best guy ever. Like, mm-hmm. after him, I never, ever looked at a fuckboy ever again in terms of dating. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I had situationships in college, and I, like, let, like, a frat boy, like, make me sad for a year once. Yeah. And We've I just, no, never again. Like, this guy was the man. He's the best. I have so much respect for him. Wasn't right for a relationship for me, but, um, love him. So I moved on from him. And then at 24, I dated a guy who I'd been friends with for a long time and we only dated for about eight months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and That's we were a long, long distance. Time. I mean, Kinda. for me, yeah, we were long distance. And I think we quickly realized much like the first guy, or at least I realized he would have been better off as a friend. Mm. Um, not that he wasn't a great looking guy or anything like that. It's just like, we didn't have that chemistry that was kind of like unspoken, but we had wonderful friend chemistry and or like roommate chemistry. Oh, okay. Like we just vibed really well, super easy to be around. And it took me a long time to realize that I needed that other component. Um, And the first time I ever had, I would say like three components to like what I think makes a good natural relationship, which is like the sexual chemistry. Mm -hmm. That was important to me in this, you know, relationship with Joe because I had never really had like a really overt sexual chemistry with someone that which is the second component I also really respected as a person mm-hmm. and like wanted to be like and wanted to be around um because that's my other guys in my life were that they had that second component and then the third one is like just a solid friendship mm-hmm. so the other guys had like the two but not the that overt sexual chemistry mm-hmm. and Joe was the first guy I ever met that had all three wow like the first guy I've ever known to exist on the planet <laughs> Well, they're far and few between. <laughs> yeah, they really are. <laughs> they really are. And it's so dependent on you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so it works for me isn't going to work for you. And it's like finding like a needle in a haystack kind of. Totally. So. Thank you so much to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode of Making Moves. If your doctor can recite every line from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, 
but can't remember your name, it's time to get a new doctor with ZocDoc. ZocDoc makes it easy to find quality doctors in your network and in your neighborhood. Plus, with real verified patient reviews, you can find the right doctor for you. One that actually remembers your name. I love ZocDoc so much because I moved to LA without knowing a soul, no aunts, no uncles, no family members, and I had no one to recommend any of their doctors to me. ZocDoc is so convenient for anyone that has just moved to a big city or hasn't found a doctor they love yet to find the perfect doctor because they're actual patient-reviewed doctors on there and they consider all of the things. Is it in your insurance network? Is it near you? Are they going to attend to all of your needs? ZocDoc has it all. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, takes your insurance, and are available when you need them. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, and I'm one of them. It's my go-to whenever I need to find and book a quality doctor. Go to ZocDoc.com slash moves and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash moves. ZocDoc.com slash moves. What do you feel like made you ready or open to dating someone for real? Like, what are qualities you think you need to have down Mm -hmm. before you find someone you want to date for real? Because I feel like right now I'm like, I don't feel there, but I'm like, I'm wanting to get there there soon. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I had like a really visceral experience with Mm -hmm. this when I was 26. And it was like a month after I turned 26. I... Um, this is right before I met Joe, by the way, and I'm into like manifestation and things like that. I also think it's like some form of like what you're looking for, you're going to find kind of thing. Um, but I remember just like sitting in my bed and having this realization that I hadn't had a really serious relationship in my life. And I was, had I'd never been in love. Mm -hmm. I'd never said I love you to a man. I was like, I need to have that experience, I think. And I think like at that point I wasn't operating from a place of desperation, or needing attention or anything like that. I was just like, I want this experience. I feel like um, maybe I was just able to hold myself accountable a little Mm -hmm. bit more, I think, at that age. And I was so, like, responsible for my own self and my own being. And I was like, it'd be really nice to have someone that can match my energy or, like, take care of me for once, which I feel like in my life I didn't really ever have. I've always been, like, really Mm hyper-independent. So I remember, like, having this, like, visceral experience where I was like, okay, this is exactly what I want. And I laid out exactly what I want, um, holding nothing back. I was like, not feeling guilty about the things that I wanted. This is what I love about Peyton. Yeah, like, I was like, you <laughs> know what the fuck you want. And you don't, yes. I feel like so many, so, especially women, mm-hmm. you hold it in. Well, this was my first experience admitting that to myself. Okay. Okay, and I that's why this. it was so like life changing. And I think that's why it happened for me as I was like, I feel like as women, we're always, always told, okay, like, you know, part of the reason I was in relationships before that weren't so great, maybe sexually, is because I was like, okay, that grows later, and you're supposed to be attracted to this person. Like he's they're your best friend, and like mm-hmm. your minds love each other and things. And so I always overlooked that part and was like, it'll grow, it'll grow, it'll grow, and it just didn't. Mm. And I realized after a long time, like some people are just meant to be your friends. I don't owe everyone a relationship mm-hmm. just because we like and respect each other. Mm-hmm. Um, there needs to be that component. So I feel like once I let go of like this idea that I needed to be sweet and understanding and like overlook sex specifically and relationships like that in order to, I don't know, prioritize men that just were my friends um, and like good, the good guys kind of thing. And I really focused on what I want, which number one for me when I was laying in bed that night, this was like all done. Like I was literally like about to go to sleep. And I was like, <laughs> my oh my God. Yeah. Spiraling I'm going. laying there. I'm like, all right. I had this like weird out of body experience. And I was just like, I want to feel like X, Y, and Z things. So I was saying to myself, like, I really want to feel super sexually into somebody who I also respect. Because mm. be- at this point I had either or. You know what I mean? No, um, that's how I feel right now. I'm like, yeah. oh, do I either like find them smart or find them hot? Like, mm-hmm. it's like, yes. <laughs> why can I have both? And usually <laughs> when you have both, they like fuel each other. So mm-hmm. like when they work off of each other, like yes. you say someone's sexy and you also think someone's smart and inspiring. And then they're also your like good friend. And you and it makes them more sexy. Yeah. yeah. And it just like really makes everything else more intense. Um, and I hadn't really figured that out yet, I guess. But I, 
I knew that I wanted to be like so sexually attracted to somebody that I wanted to just like rip their clothes off all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also wanted to be really inspired and I really wanted to feel safe. I feel like I was just, I was focusing on feelings. Mm. And then I was like, safety to me meant someone who can take care of me because I'm always taking care of myself, whether that be, you know, fiscally with money, they can take me out on a nice dates. And I was very upfront about that. I would not date someone who made less money than me. Mm -hmm. Um, Preferably, I wanted someone who made more money than me. Uh, And I was just like, "Mm, that's what I want. And I wasn't like, oh, no, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't. How do you feel like you had the confidence to like actually feel that? I don't, it was this like breakthrough moment with myself. Yeah. I was like, why am I not even admitting this to myself? Did you before that moment uh-huh. feel the, that way or did you have to like kind of build that up? I don't know that I felt that way. I feel like I just let the way I'm supposed to feel dictate so many of my feelings that I wasn't even paying attention to how I actually felt. Mm. So I was like, okay, well, I shouldn't do this and I'm supposed to do this and I'm supposed to say this. And I'm like, I, you know what? I do care if I'm looking for a partner. I want them to make as much or more money than me Mm -hmm. um, because I want a certain life down the line for my children. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like that's going to take some money. The life I want to build for kids that I have in the future is not (laughs) cheap. Mm -hmm. So I know I work hard and I know that my own personal, you know, money situation is always improving. So I wanted to be with someone that could match that at least because the last thing I ever want to be is like pulled tied down with someone who can't do the same things as me it is different i will say like if someone's in startup mode like you're with someone really smart and intelligent and amazing and they're really um, inspiring in that way mm-hmm. and i'm not saying that everyone needs to value what i value but mm-hmm. i'm just saying these that's are the things that i, I value valued. yeah well that's what i love about you is it, like whether i agree or not yeah. or whether anyone agrees or disagrees at least you know what you want and you're mm-hmm. confident in that and that's all that matters at the end of the day like you don't have to think about what other people want when it's your life yes like yeah you're you're literally like i don't give a shit if this bothers you or doesn't this Mm -hmm. is what i want and you're going full force and i think that's i don't know why with women i feel like that's such a hard thing to grasp well it's very polarizing when a woman does that like i was just talking to joe about this you know drew afualu Mm -hmm. okay so she there was a BuzzFeed article about her recently and she was like saying the TikToker right? yeah the okay. TikToker mm-hmm. she's like a vigilante for women basically yeah, and she, she just is. like calls out she's like these guys and her line of logic is brilliant like I genuinely think she's brilliant she is she is so I don't know she just, she's just very intelligent in my opinion and I think her opinions and the way that she like connects things for women is really smart and insightful mm-hmm. and um I'm just obsessed with her. What was her line of logic? Or like So like everything just everything she says, I'm like, that was so brilliant the way you put it mm-hmm. in such few words, for example. Mm. Like, I'm not a copywriter. You just asked me to elevator pitch and I just told you my life story. <laughs> like I can't do that. So whenever someone can like kind of explain things that I think in such few words. Yeah. I'm like, you are so or smart. Or like how you're feeling yes. in, in and put it few into words. words. Uh-huh. So like I just I love that. I'm like, you're so smart. It's just it's so cool. So Anyway, she was she did this BuzzFeed article or something. There was a BuzzFeed article on her and she was saying that like she she is people call her out for being like the female Andrew Tate is what they say Mm -hmm. Um, when she's clearly not like you can't be a female Andrew Tate. You can't like punch. Uh, I don't even men. know who like Andrew Tate is. He's, like, I, you know, he's like the, yeah, worst, so the we worst. We won't even talk we about. We won't. Him. So they yeah. call. They've been calling her that on the internet. Okay. And she's like, and they're always trying to diss her by being like, "Oh my god, you're so mean." Because a female has an opinion. Yeah, you're so mean. And she's like, "Listen, it's supposed to be mean. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna be nice to men who don't deserve me being nice. Yeah. It's supposed to be." mean and if you're Mm -hmm. taking it like it's mean you're doing it the right way and she was like i'm being mean to you and she was saying first like i'm responding to men being horrible to women um and i'm being mean but you did it for fun and i'm doing it for a reason it's like one of her last lines and i was like again she boils it down to like these things and i'm like oh my god but i was telling (laughs) joe like this is a headline like this is a provocative headline that this tiktoker is being mean to men who don't deserve kindness Mm -hmm. And it's very provocative for women to just kind of say what they feel and not be nice and not worry about the pretense of what, and what gonna everyone's like going to say, what, yeah. what you're supposed to do and what you need to do. Because we've been told by our whole life how you're supposed to dress, how you're supposed to act, all these things. And when women don't do that, 
it's intimidating for men. I think sometimes mm-hmm. the wrong men, obviously, they do not respond well. Trust me. I, I put my podcast like audio clips on, you know, about single life and things like that on both Instagram and TikTok. And the men in the comments are angry. They're so angry. And I know I'm doing it's so something embarrassing. right. And yeah. ba- I mean, you just you're telling on yourself. You're literally telling on yourself yeah. all the time in the comments. But they're really mad. And it's it's ins- insane to me because I'm usually around men that are very intelligent and like around very intelligent men. In my experience, mm-hmm. the women run everything mm-hmm. in my house. The women run everything. Mm-hmm. And it's obvious that like women are very powerful. Mm-hmm. And if we speak like this. It's not a lot of surprise. The men are like, oh, no, but like we're, we're doing yeah. this. Like it's just and they're all intelligent, successful men. So when I see like men reacting like this, I'm like, where are y'all? Like I don't run into men like this yeah. in my day to day life. Thank fucking God. But <laughs> And I work in like a woman led industry. So like, thank God I don't have to work yeah. with that many men like that. Um, and the men who work in women led industries are typically great because mm-hmm. they're used to you know, seeing how amazing women are literally all day. Um, but yeah, it's it's so, to back to your point, provocative for a woman to be like, this to say is what how I she want. Feels. And it's always going to offend someone, but a lot of men when mm-hmm. you say that, especially, you know, the way, way it tells on them is if they don't fall into that category. Yeah. So then they're offended and you're like, cool, be offended. I don't give a fuck. That's like, embarrassing. I'm just telling you what I want. You don't, I don't. You're not made for me. That's yeah, okay. Weeds them out. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's all right. You can be with whoever the fuck else you want to be with mm-hmm. who wants someone more like you. It's just not me. <laughs> exactly. All. And I was unapologetic about it. And I feel like the second I started doing that in every area of my life, which it didn't all come at once, mm-hmm. like I was unapologetic about like maybe work first and then about friends and relationships later. And it's just made my life so much better to face my truth in myself, admit it to myself, and then live literally like live that truth as cheesy Mm -hmm. as that is to say how do you have though the confidence to live that way unapologetically for me it's just come with age because i'm 28 now i'll be 29 next month Mm -hmm. i'm like crazy crazy i'm like i just don't the older i'm getting and i know people in you know their 30s are like oh my god you don't give a fuck then and like you know my grandma's in her 70s right now and she's like this is the best decade of my entire life (laughs) like i give zero fucks i think i just realized like how small I am on the earth I no one really cares what I'm doing it's not that big of a deal like if I do something or don't do it if I'm confident or not confident no one really cares besides myself so Mm -hmm. I might as well just be confident because like I don't know I've gotten very humbled not in the sense of that I was doing anything that was super super self-important but I was I've just guess realized how small and insignificant I am which is maybe be more confident for some reason You know, like, it's just so trivial that I'm like, I don't really care, like, if this person has this bad thought about me. No, that makes sense in a weird way. It does make sense in a weird way. I'm I'm kind of that person, though, that, like, the more that I learn and the more insignificant I become, the more confident and alive I've become in my life. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of like, I feel like metaphorically speaking, it can be compared to, like, my experience living in Los Angeles. Like, I feel so free here because everyone is better than me at everything. And everyone's prettier and smarter. Like you're going to find someone better than you at every turn here. Mm -hmm. And for some people, it makes them hate Los Angeles because they get jealous. So they're like, why not me? Or, you know, they're just so fixated on everyone being better. Whereas for me, it makes me feel like free because no one cares about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, this is great. (laughs) This is wonderful. Well, it's like the difference between a person that wants to be a big fish in a small pond or thrives being a... Yeah. Being a small fish in a and big, a big pond. pond. And I like that. I like mm-hmm. the latter a lot. I just feel very free. Well, it's, for me, it's motivating. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, if this boss ass bitch at this age could reach that, like, yeah. fuck yeah, I can do that too or yes. whatever. You know, it's like. Mm-hmm. And I love there's something inspiring. you said for like, for example, I'm an influencer by trade. That's my job. And not a lot of people have heard of me. I don't have a massive following, but there's so many people in a city like this or New York where you don't have to be famous. You don't have to have millions of followers and you can make a really, really great living. Like you Mm -hmm. don't have to be the best in the world, but you can do your thing and have a great life and a great job and And meet great people. And I just love, I love that. I don't need to be the most famous. I mean, I wouldn't want to be the most famous Mm -hmm. person in the world. And I don't um, need to be the most beautiful or the most, you know, whatever. I can just be myself because there's, logically no other option so yeah. it's just like you just have to fall into it because like what else are you I gonna fucking that. do i love that also you know some, there really are pros and cons to both like mm-hmm. there's 
there's pros to not being the biggest oh, in your industry. 100%. You know what I mean? Like as far as like fame, like I have so much empathy for people like Hailey Bieber or like the mm-hmm. Jenners or, you know, what well, I even like, think about Alicia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she's one of the best like OG YouTubers yeah. of all time. And I'm like, it's just, it's a different life mm-hmm. that I lead. There's problems that she has that I currently just don't because I'm not as big. Yeah. And it's like, like she looks at my life sometimes and is like, oh, TK, I wish that was my biggest yeah. problem. You know what I She's, mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and, more like, people like her are like, oh my God, so simple. Like, uh, yes. And then so there's simple. things that I look at her and I'm like, oh, I wish I had the opportunity. Absolutely. But with more opportunity comes more problems. And yeah. it's like, you know, the saying more yeah. money, more problems. <laughs> but I think that's a really cool way to look at your life. Yeah. I just feel ex- insignificant in a very inspiring way. Mm-hmm. I guess that's why I like loved living with Peyton is because like she would come home and just like tell me that yeah (laughs) she'd be like so today I had this realization that as I've turned you know I'm in my eighth month of my 28th year (laughs) like you're so like I'm like this is what I learned this month yeah yeah that a b and c happened and that's why d is going to happen (laughs) and e is falling into place as we speak and I'm like that is so true it actually makes sense yeah Yeah. I actually was looking at um because I've you know diving more into like who I am and like what Mm -hmm. I want to do which I think everyone should do like find out things that make you happy or that excite you and like maybe the way that you think things that align with the way that you think for example I'm into philosophy I just love it I've always loved it since I was middle school and my little like smart kid school Mm -hmm. they made us read a lot of philosophy at really young and um I looked into like getting my master's in philosophy because I was like that would just be so fun I feel like every day I would just really enjoy that type of thinking because that's what I'm already it's kind of like in line with what I'm already thinking about and a lot of us have that in us but it just you know depends on the person that you are Mm -hmm. but that might be coming soon for me (laughs) I want to do that so bad that could be so fun I know Um, speaking of okay sounds like you have an idea of what you're good at you're confident in all of those things what do you feel like you struggle Mm -hmm. with and want to be better at? Because I feel like this is like from looking, being an outsider's perspective. I mean, I literally lived with you, so I have like the inside scoop. (laughs) But now that I haven't lived with you for a year, I'm like, damn, like Peyton looks like she's thriving, she's living, which I'm sure you are. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, what are you, what's the nitty gritty like we don't know that you're dealing with or you're struggling with or you're trying to get better at currently? Um, So definitely boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I talk about this a lot on my own podcast. I think for me, boundaries with my family has been a huge thing for me this year um I don't have a lot of the same values as my family I think in a lot of ways and we don't live similar lifestyles and so for me it's taken me a long time to realize like if I don't agree with somebody I don't need to argue with them I don't want to for example if like in the religious or political space like for some like religion, I don't want to argue against someone's religion Mm -hmm. if it makes them happy. Like I just don't want to, Mm -hmm. I don't need to be arguing what I believe, what I don't believe because it doesn't fucking matter what I believe. If it makes them happy, it makes them happy. Um, and I realized that, you know, within the last few years, just because someone comes at you with an argument doesn't mean you need to respond because the end result is like, I don't want you to not believe something that's helping you. Um, and then with political things, you're just kind of like, so I studied politics in college. That's what my degree is in. And there's lots of tactics that we learned, especially in political campaigning, that I see at, at practice um, in both parties, really. And for me, it's kind of like an out-of-body experience or it's like feels like the Truman Show where I'm like, <laughs> is no one else seeing this? Like this is like it just it's hard to explain unless you've just studied it, you know, at length for four plus years. Mm-hmm. So with that kind of stuff, I understand also like somewhat of the psychology you take advantage of in order to make people believe certain things politically um and i again when i see it at play i know how powerful it is and i don't want to argue with people's politics because a lot of the times it it overlaps with religion Mm. and morals of course those are the politics and religions thing that always come up when i'm around not like maybe my nuclear family a lot but like extra family members 100 percent same yeah like we all voted right to devoted to not to never understanding mm-hmm. and just being fucking assholes about stuff. Mm-hmm. And for me, I've let those people bait me into arguments a lot mm-hmm. and it's ruined my mental health when I'm home. Mm-hmm. And I've been the one at the Thanksgiving table, you know, sobbing, crying, <laughs> making a big fucking deal about everything. Like I've been doing that since I was 18. <laughs> I d- it took me like independent woman. Right? It took me like one sociology of like race class and one sociology of gender class. Mm-hmm. Just 
half, you know, semester, semester classes to kind of get in the nitty gritty and be like, just it, the morality of it all like really stresses me out. So getting into arguments with people that just are committed to not understanding um, is not my thing anymore, but while also still respecting them. And they also don't, they don't realize that they're not respecting me, but you know, I just am trying to be more respectful while also putting that boundary up and not letting myself get so emotionally charged. Yes. I've been trying to be in in touch with like putting my emotions aside when I'm having a disagreement because right now my brother is like staying with me. Mm -hmm. And even this morning, like I wanted to lash out on him because I was like emotionally mad, Mm -hmm. but I was like, no, this is like, I was like, put this aside. What am I actually frustrated with right now? And speak in human Words. form yeah. yeah i mean emotions and feelings <laughs> are so powerful yeah. so like again you can use them for me using them for like the manifestation thing and focusing on how i want to feel has been helpful but then i think also they work against you in mm-hmm. a lot of ways it's slightly embarrassing sometimes it's very embarrassing yeah. <laughs> so i'm d- dealing with a lot of like just emotional stuff like that obviously i talk about anxiety depression things like that i've gotten that pretty much under control for mm-hmm. the most part what else? I mean, I've got like a laundry list and I will, I like blatantly say them usually all the time. Uh-huh. Um, I'm really bad at, at delegating. Um, Same. And my anxiety makes me procrastinate. Like I get mm. a lot of anxiety about something really simple and I then I won't do it and I'll be on my to-do list forever and I just, when I actually do it, it takes two seconds. Mm-hmm. Like right now I need to go pay for my health insurance. I, I can pay for my health insurance and I can just get on the internet and pay for the, my health insurance. But I'm like, oh my God, what if my password, I don't remember it. No, and then I, I'm I like, oh this. my, so I'm going to put it off for days and then it's going to be too late. Uh-huh. And then they're going to be like, you need to re-up. And I'm going to be like, okay, then I have to get new health insurance. Like, I'm not going to go through that again because mm-hmm. I've done that way too many times. But I just put stuff off that is absolutely unnecessary because maybe at one point in my life, I would struggle to pay for health insurance, but I genuinely, I'm not struggling to pay mm-hmm. for health insurance. And I just still You're struggling to, log to do in. it yeah, yeah yeah i'm like why can't i just freaking do it just do the job joe's really good at that stuff like if he needs to do something he's like oh health insurance and does this health insurance i both my brother and dad honestly my mom too like they're both fabulous at that. my strength does not lie in administrative type no, thing no. shit at all like no. i my strength lies in me being creative being on camera being stupid like filming mm-hmm not nothing else. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like the difference between like linear and like more chaotic creative maybe. thinking. Like Joe's very linear, so like he'll be like, "I need to do this," and then he does it. For me, I'm like, hey, "I have to do this, but I have to do this, and I, then I have to do this first, and then like maybe this goes into this." And I, I have like lists broken down into lists, broken down into lists of things, and I'm also just like all over the place, even uh-huh. with the way that I speak. Like I'm like, "Hey, I'll, I'm gonna bookmark this, go on a tangent, come back." You know, it's just uh-huh. it might be more of a for me, the women in my life are a lot like that. We just have a lot going on in our brains. Well, like we're better at multitasking. Yes. And women we can, are. We can hit we're so many different topics. Mm-hmm. Whereas like if I have a conversation like that with Joe sometimes, especially in like a disagreement or an argument, mm-hmm. I can't go all the, over, all the places. Mm-hmm. I can't speak in metaphors. I can't. I have to be direct and linear for him to like understand what I'm saying. Mm. And I'm noticing that a lot. That It comes out that kind of like logic, in my opinion, comes out in like his doing of tasks or you know yeah. it's just he and does this thing or he like plays a video game he enjoys the video game he's uh-huh. not thinking about anything else but the video game <laughs> except for maybe like what are we gonna order for dinner yeah but he has to take his headphones off and then think about what we're gonna order for dinner yeah <laughs> and then put his headphones back on and play the video game again you uh-huh. know it's just it's so linear <laughs> my dad like this reminds me because my dad will call me and be like hey did you talk to your financial advisor about blah 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 like because our, our financial advisor is like a family friend he's yeah. like Hey, did you like fill this out, the form that he sent you? Mm-hmm. And in my head, like it's so embarrassing to admit, admit it's like a mountain of a task. Yes, yes. But like everything else that's actually way harder and bigger mm-hmm. and time consuming, like I'm doing. Oh, well, no. Coming into podcast studios, like yeah. when I come to work and uh-huh. like go in studio with the, you know, the producer and uh-huh. everybody and a guest, I'm like, that's nothing. Like yeah. I'll just do that real quick. It's fine. Yes. The form? I fucking can't and do like that. And like a week later, my dad's like, have you done it? And I'm like, it's embarrassing for me. To, I'm embarrassed to be yeah. like, no, I haven't done it. Or I <laughs> yeah. haven't activated my new card. Like, yes. and, and they're like, but why? Like, like just call the you're number. lazy. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I swear I'm not. It's just like, yes. this is a mountain of a task for me. It's so, so much. There's something, I'll, I'll think about it, but there's something that happened but recently. I wonder if like other this. women, like this is maybe a female thing. Yeah. Or like a, I'm just like, oh, that's so small. I'll do that later. Like yes. I put it at the bottom it's of my an list. Anxiety thing.
recently what I've been doing in the past years prior, I didn't want to check my bank account because I was like scared. I didn't want to check my credit card because I was like, I didn't want to know. Like I'm like, you know, I avoided it. Now I have someone, a financial guy with my bank who has my full like um, plan uh, for my money Mm -hmm. laid out. He invests it for me. He's great. I'm loving it. There's money in there to invest. Like things are going well. Mm -hmm. I even curb him. And he's like, Peyton, I'm making you more money right now. (laughs) Like the faster we could do this, the more money you have potential of making. Like it's, I'm not telling you, you don't like, I'm not going to scare you. Like this Uh is, this is good. This is like good stuff. And I'm trying to help you. And I'm still like, I have anxiety. I have anxiety, anxiety. I relate. (laughs) I relate. I I feel like. That's one thing I'm trying to get better at is like instead of avoiding like the best thing to do specifically with money is mm-hmm. know exactly how much you have, exactly where it's going. It's at freeing all to know yes. this information. Yes. Yeah. Normally I'm like ignorance is bliss. Yes. And like with you your money it isn't. Yeah. You need to know where what's going. Even the other day I like had fraud on my credit card. So mm-hmm. I um, Ugh, had to get a new disaster. one, do the whole thing. Right. Yeah. And then I had to look at all my statements to see what they used as fraud. Mm-hmm. And then in the midst of that, so then my cr- card went out of use. So then all of my subscriptions that that card was linked to like have we're like hate. oh you need to pay like hate, whatever hate. or take a new or you know enter your new card that is literally what happened with my health insurance it is i had to go i had to get a new card yeah. and it i couldn't put it on the old card anymore and now i'm like Ugh, i had to change no, my information and it's so simple and sounds so stupid but what was awesome with this problem is that i found out you know what i actually don't really use like the peloton thing yeah. anymore i'm yeah. paying like what, $39 a month, which isn't that much, but it adds up. It does add up. That is yeah. a lot. And then it's like, do I really use like Disney Plus or like mm-hmm. the add-ons on my Hulu account? Or like, do you know what I mean? All those things I realized like, actually, I haven't been at 45 in like a month. Like I yes. don't need to be paying for that or whatever. So it's kind of a blessing and a curse. But like, I don't know. I really want to get better at knowing exactly where my money is at all times and how much I'm spending and how much is coming mm-hmm. in per month because – I think it's the easy thing to do is avoid it and just be like, it's fine. Yeah. Like ignorance is bliss. I did that for a while and I was, I had a lot of like any cash I made sitting in account, not making me any money. And it, one of the best things I've done for myself so far in my twenties in the last year has been to identify that one, I'm not going to put my own money in like a TD Ameritrade account and manage it. I just know I'm not going to do that. It's not happening. Would it be the best idea? Cause there's no f- like fees for someone doing it. Mm-hmm. Sure. But I met with with my financial advisor. We had great financial advisor and advisee chemistry. He's amazing. He's Mm -hmm. a friend of a friend as well. Um, And he's like young and he understands what my plan is. He drew up a whole plan. We talked about it. It, Leaving that that meeting made me feel like a real adult. I was Mm -hmm. like, wait a minute. Like, I don't know why I was expecting bad stuff or just like getting anxiety, but it made me feel good. And I'm trying to train myself to look at money more like that now because I don't need to be so worried all the time. Mm -hmm. It should be empowering kind Mm -hmm. of. Absolutely. And that meeting with him was really helpful. Um, I guess I was just so, I've been used to in my 20s thus far, probably up until like 26, just being like nervous and being like afraid of seeing my rent coming out of my bank account and Mm -hmm. afraid of this and afraid of that. And I feel lucky and I also feel deserving that I'm at a position I am now. Well, you worked your ass off. I worked my ass Mm -hmm. off and I'm trying to be smart and understand, like, for example, the financial advisor thing. Mm. Understand where, I, where I'm where i not going to do something. I'm not going to do the TD Ameritrade thing and self-manage. So I'm going to hire someone. Even if you someone. can. Yeah. Well, that's what I want to emphasize, too, is, like, even though you're fully capable and smart enough to do that, mm-hmm. that is actually better for you in the long run to hire someone because it would be a waste of your time when really you could be getting a video yeah. up making more money or whatever the whatever it is mm-hmm. and some i feel like a lot of times too as like females you feel like you need to explain yourself yes. which you've done such a good job that like i've learned from you that mm-hmm. you actually don't need to you don't explain need to yourself. of course if you want to explain it to for me like the reason i have a podcast mm-hmm. is i explain myself to other women who might be in the same boat as me and mm-hmm. i explain my in our workings and why I chose to do that rather than it be someone coming at me and me having to explain myself. You know what I mean? Like when I find myself in that situation or like defend myself, I've really had to work on that too. Like Mm -hmm. not defending myself. It kind of goes with the boundaries. Like what do you mean? Like, like again, we were talking about maybe politics or religion or something Mm. like that where someone's trying to bait me into an argument that I don't want to be in rather than explaining my own personal beliefs, which are pretty middle of the road in every case 
possible and very like you can do whatever you want kind of police right it's Mm -hmm. just your thing you do what you gotta do just don't be hurting people or you know whatever that's one thing i'm not going to deal with but anyway i have to explain and over explain why i believe these things and i'm like i don't i'm just not even going to explain this to you if you want to ask me what i believe i will happily tell you but i'm not explaining to you why and i'm not justifying my position because i don't need to do that Mm -hmm. to you like why um there's also there's a difference between that also and getting in like a a conversation about something that might like stimulate you me learning something new you know what I mean but you can usually tell when it's going to be a debate where someone is just unwilling to even learn anything and or a conversation like that where well, someone's willing. Well they don't willing. deserve to know sometimes yeah. like your reason. It depends on like the vibe they come at you with totally. you know and you can tell mm-hmm. right off the bat but I think to go back to the financial advisor thing one big thing I've learned that I need to get better at is looking at things from more of a managerial perspective like I think once you get to the point in both of our careers that we have you it's less me trying to teach myself to do stuff and being a one-man show now I have management my manager has an assistant that I talk to every single day and then there's you know a video editor there's a podcast producer Mm. there's the podcast team that does merch stuff there's um, an assistant should I have one I had one in DC and I, I miss her very much mm-hmm. Megan if you're listening miss you shout out um, what is it Megan <laughs> Megan shout yeah, out Megan she's so cute um, and then who else just financial people mm-hmm. graphic design people like instead of me doing all of those things now and taking up a lot of time I feel like I've had to really start learning delegation and management of people mm-hmm. which I've heard a lot from people when they get better at their job they're like oh it became less me doing my job and more like me or what I considered doing my job Mm -hmm. more like me just going through a workflow with a bunch of different people which is what I'm trying to find my like my you know vibe with right now Mm -hmm. just making things work timeline wise it's hard it's hard it's a hard transition also I feel like letting go of like certain things that Mm -hmm. Were and are your baby. Yes. You know, like well, trusting other people. That's when it comes to like your team. Building your team is really important. Like uh, my producer, mm-hmm. I love my podcast studio. I love I um, my management. I love. And those were all very intentional choices mm-hmm. that made me better. And I have to trust them because I've chosen them for the job. And Absolutely. I can't necessarily be like micromanaging. Well, the best thing you can do is hire someone who's better than you yeah. at it. That's the goal. Yeah, yeah, that would be the goal. So exactly. that's what I've been doing. I love that. Great. Um, so you're 28, almost 29. What do you feel like are must do's in your 20s? I feel like you have lived like one of the best <laughs> almost 10 years, like in your it's 20s. Been great. You have truly like I look at your life and I'm like, damn, I want to like thrive in my 20s like Peyton. So what do you think are must do's? Like I know one of them was like going to Europe. Yeah. Like which you told me to do and I mm-hmm. did. Uh, buying a bag in Europe like it can be silly stuff like yeah. I want to be like you need it like you can you need to treat yourself to a Dr. Pepper every day or like mm-hmm. I don't know give me the silly stuff give me the serious stuff just you know whatever comes to mind I want to hear it okay so if you guys follow me on Instagram you might, might have already seen this but I did a partnership with a company that I really like and they you know provoked or kind of um I guess provoked is not the right word there, but they had me share some things I learned in my 20s Mm. and I kind of pitched that idea to them. Um, So the five things I came up with for that piece of content are really true to me. So Mm -hmm. I don't, they're not in any order, but one for me was moving to Los Angeles. Okay. Um, I did that at 22 out of college. I didn't know anybody really. I like. I agree. Move to a big city. Move to a big city. Even if you know no one. And it really scared me. Like genuinely people are like, how do you do it? How are I, you know, I'm too nervous. That's that's why I did it. I was really nervous, but something always kind of drew me to Los Angeles, even since I was young. Um, it could be New York too. Like I have a really an itch to move to New York. Um, but I moved to a city that made me really intimidated, but at the same time, it made me really excited, mm-hmm. which is kind of two sides of the same coin, like intimidation and excitement. I feel like kind of go hand in hand sometimes. Well, that means it's like a good fit. Yes. And it was exhilarating, really, at the end of the day to move to L.A. And it was hard. It was very difficult. It was very expensive. It I did a lot of like odd jobs in order to like pay rent and stuff like that. Luckily, my parents would help me should I like run into a situation where like I literally couldn't do it. Um, But I worked my fucking ass off for a really long time. Um, And that taught me a lot about myself moving somewhere to where like you cannot be naive. Mm. It. I luckily am very skeptical as a person and I'm very logical and I feel like I can just like follow when people are being 
weird. Bullshitting you, yeah. Yeah, and I just don't let other people give me hope and I don't rely on other people typically. So it's hard to take advantage of someone like that because they're just not nice enough, I guess. Um, And it really hardened me in a good way, I think. Like it made me more aware, a little more street smart, I guess, living in a place like this. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just... It was a challenge and I I love that I did it. And I also I became myself without my parents, without my family, without my close, close friends. I just really figured out who I was mm-hmm. almost alone. And I was always working for myself too. So like it was just this whole an inner experience that I, mm-hmm. I really value. Um I spent some time being single, quite a lot of time actually, and I went through like loneliness and the want for maybe attention or whatever. Um and I always thought and brought myself to thinking like there are worse things than feeling lonely. Like I could be in a relationship that made me feel really bad about myself and I'd probably prefer loneliness yeah. <laughs> over that kind or of like intensity. Abusive relationship yeah, or like yeah. something oh, yeah. just like where they're cheating all the time or like something where I'm worried all the time. Cause yeah, I was lonely, but I was always like at peace. Like I think of that meme that's like Kim Kardashian laying in bed and it's like, um, <laughs> this is how I sleep knowing like no one's out there cheating on me or mm-hmm. something. Like it's just, I wasn't, there are worse things than being lonely mm-hmm. and being lonely teaches taught me a lot it taught it teaches me patience. You a lot about yourself yeah oh yeah and i filled my time with things that were great like i have a whole episode called living your best single life mm-hmm. that talks about like how wonderful being single is if you like really think about it mm-hmm. um and that's coming from someone in a relationship of two years with someone i love mm-hmm. part of the reason i'm in that is because i was single for a really long time and i was patient and i got to know myself really really well without distraction mm-hmm. um Number three, getting on anxiety meds for me was huge. Um, I have another whole podcast episode about that. Like, I keep saying that because there's there's so much to say about yeah. each of these that like I'm not going to dive into obviously on you know one podcast episode. But that was life changing for me. I was off of meds for ten years through my twenties, and though my twenties have been great, the small dose of meds has been really helpful to me. And I tried everything for ten years. I was like meditating. I was doing all the little things mm-hmm. you're supposed to do. And at the end of the day, I was like. I'm spending like 20 hours a day trying to not have anxiety. Like it it was easier for me to just take medication. Mm -hmm. So I dive deeper on that um, in another podcast episode and a lot on my, in my um, content. What else? Oh, traveling, of course, doesn't have to be Europe, but it can be anywhere. I think it's important to travel to see things and get perspective of people who you can maybe help or you can do so like do something in a charitable way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say mission work because I'm absolutely not about that life. But I think like some people would say like traveling gave them perspective because they saw people who were worse off than Mm. them. I think that is important, but I think it's traveling. And when I say worse off, I mean like physically they, they look Mm -hmm. worse off. Maybe the, they're living in more dilapidated areas or things Mm -hmm. like that because we consider that worse off Mm. when sometimes people just want to live how they want to live. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it depends. It's a case by case basis. Anyway, not the point. I think it's important to travel to places where people are like you or similar to you in some way or privileged in some way even and see how they live just to know that America, the way we live here, isn't the end all be all. Because it's not mm-hmm. like I know a lot of people from where I'm from that'll be like, yeah, I went to this, you know, third world country and it was so sad and all these things. And like I've traveled and got perspective and I'm like, all that's doing is reinforcing that your life here is the best one you can live oh, wow. and the only one to live mm-hmm. or you have to do live this other life where there's so many places in the world where people live amazing, maybe mm-hmm. more amazing lives than we do even here sometimes. Mm-hmm. And seeing that and seeing how other people live to me is really important. That are happy. both, you know. Yeah, yeah. happy, healthy, just seeing a lot, a huge array. But I, I like to touch on that because where I'm from, again, people always go in that other direction and I'm like that's not really what all traveling is about like you want to see everything Mm. and I think that that's been important to me is traveling as much as possible I tried to do so you know on a budget because I I never really had I mean the second I got any money I spent it on traveling and to me that was worth it I did that when I was like 25 I went to Europe for Mm -hmm. only like a month and haven't been back since COVID but it was really really fun I'm going next week actually for the first time since COVID um and then what else? Oh, the last one that I can I really thought of in this piece of content that is important to me that we've already discussed is humbling myself. Or I guess, you know, one, understanding that I don't need to care about everyone's judgment of me and also understanding that people don't care about my judgment of them usually. Mm-hmm. So like learning to shut your mouth when appropriate, learning that I don't need to have a response to everything. Um, I don't need to have a judgment of everything. It's such a waste of time. Um, We're conditioned to judge things, you know, in order to like live. I think it's like a 
a mechanism that we develop over time mm-hmm. to like judge is this okay to eat and judge is this you know that kind of thing but I think we take it too far and judge character and all these things it's just not my job mm-hmm. and it, it's humbling to know that people don't give a fuck usually what I think about their lives at all so it's like freeing and humbling and it's just great to know that and then vice versa I don't have to care about what they think necessarily mm-hmm. 100% I think those are all fabulous pieces of advice for people to you know take a hold of in their 20s mm-hmm. is there anything like silly or like uh, you know more like daily daily random things I think little things for me like I'm a big simple pleasures person mm-hmm. so like finding little things that I love like I always bring this up people who follow me know mashed potatoes I freaking <laughs> love mashed potatoes yeah, I do. incorporate mashed potatoes in my life What's like wherever the potato possible potato soup you used to baked potato soup, yeah, baked potato uh, soup. I love there's baked potato soup on the menu I'm gonna order it it doesn't matter if it's like 105 degrees outside I'm getting mm-hmm. hot baked potato soup it's kind of gross, but it's amazing. Little things like that are important to me. I love to have my coffee or tea in a cup with like coasters, like like a teacup oh, cute. thing. Um, and I love like supplements. I love murder podcasts. So incorporating like little things that make me just like happy throughout mm-hmm. the day are it's actually life changing for my day. And it doesn't need to be expensive things. It can just be like little things that make me like excited to be alive. Mm-hmm. Morning coffee walk. This morning I made my coffee at home in order to like not spend seven dollars on fills every day, and it just wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. I was like, it might be worth the seven dollars to like feel the the happiness that I feel mm-hmm. when I'm doing that. I know. So I think incorporating those are it's important. That's something I'm learning so much lately. Is mm-hmm. like it's okay to like not work and watch your favorite show. Yeah. If you want to lay like, down, just lay down. I get it. It sounds ridiculous and annoying. Yeah. Like, I get it. But, like, even the other day, I got my nails done, and I was, like, genuinely so excited. I was showing everyone. Mm-hmm. I was like, Phil, like, yeah. look at my nails. <laughs> and he was like, I have not seen you this excited about something. Yeah. And, like, and I was like, you know what? This is for myself. Yes. I need to do this more. Mm-hmm. Like, treat yourself. It's so nice. Even, like, for me, sometimes I'll do, like, an at-home spa night mm-hmm. or, like, even, like, a little... On TikTok, I saw like a lymphatic drainage massage for your face and mm-hmm. like your body. Just doing that. I mean, I took like some lotion and like rubbed my stomach for yeah. 10 minutes and I was like, nice. You're That's like, hell great. yes. <laughs> Lovely. I'm, I'm killing it. So just like doing as many of those little things as you can because they really make a huge difference and they can be teeny tiny mm-hmm. to, you know, huge. And we did a whole other podcast episode on that because I wanted to know other people's and some people had some really good like simple pleasures. Oh, really? Yeah, this one girl said she likes to take baths and listen to like emo music. Oh. And I was like, that's a vibe. That's a good one. Um, the whole like teacup with coasters thing. Uh, someone said bamboo sheets, like get, like s- getting all clean. Definitely investing in good up. sheets. Got the bamboo sheets with like a silky pillowcase. So I Ooh. went after that episode and bought bamboo sheets no with way. a silky pillowcase and it is life changing. Just on wow. Amazon. Bamboo okay. sheets. Slay. They're so soft. They're so <laughs> soft. So I like every time we, you know, even this morning we we're trying to get out of bed and me and Joe were just like, oh, I feel so soft and cozy oh right God, now. I love that. Genuinely makes my everyday better, which, you know, makes your life better mm-hmm. overall. What about advice with um, not necessarily dating, but just like hookup culture, like being in your 20s, like mm-hmm. trying to find what you like yeah or you know what I mean just like what about that so the first thing that pops into my head about this is it's kind of provocative again but I do what I want to do and the way I can break that down in this scenario is when Joe and I first met the first mm-hmm. night we met we hooked up mm-hmm. I had sex with him the first night I met him um people will say not to do that I'd done that I in the like past I know so many successful couples that has happened but to. do that I yeah. mean I I don't think and I want to like go back here to we hooked up, but it wasn't because I wanted him to like me mm-hmm. and I didn't not hook up with him because I wanted him to like me. None of the none of the above me hooking up with him that night had literally nothing to do with how he was going to react to it. Ooh. It was all what I wanted in the it's moment. So good, Peyton. And I mm-hmm. I think that a lot of the time we're like, hey, well, like he won't like me if I do this. And the guy doesn't like you if you do this. And the guy we put all these rules. Why don't you just do whatever the fuck you want? Yeah. Well, first of all, do. you don't even know. Like sometimes they do. Sometimes yeah. they don't. It's not a hard and fast rule. I understand there's some psychology behind it sometimes. But in my experience, I've had like two situations like that where I've hooked up with a guy and it ended up being like a long relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, The first guy I ever dated was like that. And it was, I didn't have to try. And 
I'll just go ahead and put a disclaimer here. I'm not that good in bed. It wasn't because I was like crazy at sex. It was yeah. because it just happened. And I don't know. I guess I was unapologetic about it. I wasn't weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. That's also to say if you don't want to do anything, then don't, don't do something yeah. because it's going to make him like you. Of course, this is coming from like a straight female perspective, mm-hmm. um, talking about straight female situations. Um, but yeah, I just never really led with what the man wanted I think we do that a lot or what anyone wants what anyone wanted or what anyone thought and I think people definitely judge me for it um and I you know there are situations in where I was like really drunk and I shouldn't have done something or I I regret something of course but in my right mind I decide what I want to do and whatever I want to do is what I'm going to do and I'm not worried about letting anyone judge me for it and they might but I'm not worried about their opinion because they weren't there and they're not me Mm -hmm. so that was big for me with men and I think a lot of men actually respond really well to being unapologetic and just being like this is me like this is who I am Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna try to appease you right now and Joe really responded well to that because he was just like he I don't think he ever wanted me to be like hey well what what would Joe want me to do in this situation for me to end up dating him Mm -hmm. I I wasn't like that at all (laughs) I think a struggle of mine is I start off like that always Mm -hmm. and I feel like I always like that's what almost gets the guy to like like me is he's like this girl knows the fuck what the fuck she wants yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But my weakness or where my struggle comes in is once I end up deciding that I like them, then I'm like, what would they like? Yeah. Like I like start thinking like that, which of course like that's a natural thing to do. Well, also but I want to get to in a relationship. I think like yeah. as I go deeper in my relationship, I do think you know what does Joe like? What does Joe mm. want? But I feel like it's never gonna. I don't do things that are going to... I do that too soon, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get better at Well, because you want to make it yeah. special, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're going on a date or whatever, if he likes lingerie, you do want to do things mm-hmm. like that that he likes. But nothing that ever is going to put you in a situation where you're doing something that compromises what you want mm-hmm. or, like, your morals or it compromises you feeling good about yourself. I think that doing what your man likes at whatever point should be more empowering than it is like oh I have to do this for him because then he'll like me more it's more like oh I like him so much and we're having such a good time like of course I want to do this thing for him absolutely as long as it doesn't like conflict with like my own Mm -hmm. morals or things like that well that's just at that point in the relationship it's just considerate and fun to do that if if it's fun then it's right if it's if you are not having a good time doing what whoever likes like maybe take another look at that (laughs) maybe don't do that you know but I mean there's some things you it's easier to have fun if you if it's healthy you're doing things mm-hmm. like that in a healthy way. <laughs> okay, what about, I'm making this about me now. Okay, I just perfect. turned 25. I am single as can be. What advice do you have for me when it comes to dating and just life? What do you think I should be doing? What advice would you give me? You know me pretty well. Um. So again, I, I'm i not like, again, the most wise person on the planet, but mm-hmm. I can just, I can say what I did at yeah. 25 and that helped me. So 25, like we've discussed mm-hmm. on my podcast, it was like a very transformative year for me and it was the best year in my life because it was so transformative like we're talking about how your 25th mm-hmm. year is like I'm like challenging and <laughs> like do do? anxiety provoking that's yeah. how mine was and I okay. feel like like that year I was hanging out with people that I don't I don't hang out with anymore and mm-hmm. I was surrounded I mean here in LA my friends yeah. from home have not changed um and I was surrounded by guys that I do not re- think about anymore you know what I mean it was so different that short time ago um but it was like my blowout year I traveled I spent all my money I went to Coachella I had the best night of my life like I was just going a little crazy but also work was going well and stuff like that so I think for me I valued trying as many things as I wanted to letting loose for the first time and not working as much which I feel like you've been doing Mm -hmm. like a more than Mm -hmm. when I lived with you yeah um definitely at 24 I did yeah and having just having Focusing on having a good time and figuring out what it is that I enjoyed. Taking some risks. I talked to some guys that I liked and that were like exciting. Like when I went out, like we'd go out and like we go to dinner and be like, oh, he's going to be there. And like it was just exciting to talk to them, but never anybody that I, the reason I'm not, I wasn't dating any of them is because I never took them seriously. Mm. Um, I don't think I was in a position. I hadn't had my moment laying in bed yet being like, this is what I want. This is what I deserve. Um, But I just didn't. I think internally with my intuition, like trust them. Like I just knew they weren't the right guys Mm -hmm. for me, but still like hanging out with some guys, like filling my time not working with, you know, little things here and there, like little Mm -hmm. boys just hanging out. Mm -hmm. And that was fun and exciting with my friends. I really was heavy on the friends at 25 Mm -hmm. and we just explored and had the best time. Um, Trying out new hobbies, 
doing just like random stuff. I mm-hmm. feel like you're doing a really good job. And if you're really? feeling oh like, <laughs> if you're feeling overwhelmed, I think that's the point. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Because I was overwhelmed for sure. And again, like those, the people I was surrounded by mm-hmm. are not in my life today. Not because they're horrible people at all. They're great. But just not, they're just not here for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I. People come and go for seasons They of do. Your life. Mm-hmm. And I was, that was the end of one season for me, I think was mm-hmm. at the end of 25. And it was like, you know, the finale, it was amazing. And moving into 26, I kind of just, I feel like I settled back into who I was in like high school. Mm. Kind of. Like I just, it was like a mix between my crazy side and then like my type A um, head cheerleader, <laughs> never kissed a boy until I was like 18, like lifestyle. I like mm-hmm. kind of had a happy medium between oh, that okay. and like my crazy LA girl in the hills running around days. Yeah, see, I feel like I'm entering my like, I like being at home. I like scrapbooking yeah. mm-hmm. era a little bit. Things are slower. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like at 25 I was moving really, really fast and it was so fun. And then 26 hit, I started dating Joe, which is another mm-hmm. big part of this because like I had to slow down. I talked to him every night. I incorporated a relationship was so different from mm-hmm. anything I'd ever done. But now I feel like I'm just moving slower and almost trying to be more linear, like learning from the boys in my life maybe yeah. to try to be more relaxed and linear and not so chaotic and everywhere, mm-hmm. you know, unless oh. it comes to like thinking like, philosophically i guess yeah (sighs) well if you're in your 20s i hope you learned something from peyton because i feel like i've learned so much from her living with her for over a year and a half i'm glad i'm glad (laughs) um and uh just to reiterate i don't know what the fork i'm doing and to some extent peyton doesn't know what the fork she's doing i'm sure i'm gonna figure out like if i explain this back and laugh at this yeah i'm gonna be like oh my god can you imagine how much i thought i knew but like i want that feeling you know Mm -hmm. what i mean it it feels great but i think from a place that i am now you know being 29 in a month um i think i'm good at communicating like putting my thoughts into words and like getting it out and i'm very honest Mm -hmm. so i'm just gonna tell it like it is so i think it's Good. And I wish I had more people like myself who were older than me who would be like, this is what happened, clear and honestly. 100%. This is everything I did wrong. This is everything I did right. And, it, they're, you know, just a couple years older than me. Because it's just kind of nice to, like, have some kind of idea of what's happening next. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's going to be different for everybody. But just, like, I don't know. It's comforting to know. I wish I had more of that in my life. Like a mentor type? Yeah. yeah. I feel like the reason I started following Lauren uh, Bostick uh-huh. from The Skinny Confidential is because she's kind of that person – for me on the internet yeah uh-huh. on the internet where i'm like i since college she's always been like i don't know how much older that she is than me like under five years i think uh-huh. she's in her early 30s yeah I, I believe um she's a great one for you yeah she's like in the kind of in the next step she's married with kids she's like done a lot with her career obviously so mm-hmm. like she's always been that person for me but it took me to be 20 7 or 28 to even be old enough to be like oh i kind of know some stuff like yeah this is what I was doing at this age because I couldn't be 22 and like giving advice, mm-hmm. you know? Well, that's the cool thing about having people to follow on the internet is like you can watch someone from afar and be like, that is a life I would like to live or mm-hmm. s- certain ways or certain ex- to a certain extent. Yeah. Or, you know, they have a house I want. And it's like, what are they doing to get that? Yeah. It's fun to watch. I don't know. It's it's It's, it's healthy. fun when people are honest about it. That's why yeah, whenever true. people are like, you're living such an amazing life or because I, I sometimes get that and I'm like. I see where you're coming mm-hmm. from and I don't want to be like the Debbie Downer or the bearer of bad news, but mm-hmm. that's why I try to share. I'm not going to like exploit my life or people but in my the life, real, yeah. but I do like to say like, it's not perfect. I mm-hmm. promise. Like these are a lot of things. There's a lot of things I struggle with behind closed doors that I don't talk about because I don't want to put other people on blast who have not chosen to put their life on the internet. Absolutely. Um, I share as much as I possibly can for me. And I think, you know, it can be annoying when you find people. I, I feel like I we all now know the Internet enough to find genuine people to follow. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, when people say anything like that to me, I'm like, thank you for saying that. I'm I'm really happy that it looks that way. So it's not all ro- <laughs> rainbows and, and we can all, like, all the time. We can all, yeah, we can all yeah. like try to live a certain way. But I think I, I talk a lot about almost more negative things because I would like to be like, okay, this is like really what's happening. Uh huh. I know. That's what I've been trying to embrace with like at least being open on my podcast and my YouTube channel. Like Mm -hmm. I'm actually not thriving that much in this quarter life crisis. Yeah. It's it's hard. It's hard to be really vulnerable about things, especially when you're still figuring it out. So Mm -hmm. speaking out loud, like it's scary because you don't have like, sometimes when I talk on podcast, I have things like wrapped up in a little bow. Mm -hmm. But like, for example, I talked about the overturn of Roe v. Wade Mm -hmm. and it was like the messiest episode I've ever done because it's emotional and it's, Mm -hmm. 
I had to address that I could not. And I did a full episode on it. And when I got off the mic, I was like, I'm so nervous. Like none of that even made sense. Mm -hmm. Like I was just blabbering. But that's how I felt. And when I put it online, people responded and resonated because they were like, you don't need to have it all figured out. You know, like you can... Talk well, it's so about much things easier like to this. feel like you do know yes. what's going on or oh, having it figured out. It's easier to be like told what to do and then mm-hmm. you just do it. That's well, why it's hard to be like, your own boss. You plan like a podcast outline. Yeah. You're like, I'm going to talk about this first and this first and then we're going to conclude with this. And it's mm-hmm. harder when you're like, okay, y'all, I don't know. Like, I, I, I apologize this for this going. being messy, yeah. but I'm just going to talk and like but those are the best see what ones. comes out. Yeah, mm-hmm. people really resonate with that. But I like following people like that mm-hmm. a lot. I need I need more actually. Me too. It's more it's way more unfiltered and just like mm-hmm. I don't know. It feels like you're like genuinely there. Well, you do risk also like saying things that are going to be offensive because mm-hmm. you didn't think about it before. Like yeah. didn't you know Absolutely. like you don't even know they're well, offensive the or how you, they're going to be you know? taken. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I think it's more interesting to watch totally. for sure. Well, go listen to our podcast on Peyton's yes. um, channel. It's mm-hmm. what is it? Note to self. Note to self by Peyton Sartin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can find it awesome. anywhere you get your podcast and on YouTube. Yeah, so yeah. go subscribe, listen to our episode and. And where can everyone follow you, Peyton? You can follow me at Peyton Sartain. It's P-A-Y-T-O-N-S-A-R-T-A-I-N. People usually say Sartain. Sartain, yeah. Yeah, it looks like Sartain. So Peyton Sartain, pretty much everywhere. You can find me on YouTube, Peyton Sartain. TikTok, all the TikTok, um, and then I moved all my note to self social media over to just my personal because like it was too many outlets again to be posting on. I'm really simplifying my life. Oh, wow. So my manager was like, just do it all on one. Um, I kind of miss my little note to self Uh like uh, Instagram channel and stuff like that. It's still up. Okay. If you want to see some old content or like sampling of some podcast episodes that are already up, uh-huh. the audio is up there, but I'm just posting more on my own social now. What about TikTok? Do you have your note to self TikTok still? It's still up, but I'm but only using not. mine. Yeah. Got it. Because I, I mean, I, I was kind of like in that space where I was like, okay, I don't really have that much to post about. Like, how am I going to post like two or three TikToks a day? And my manager was like, just combine your other it's and so hard. do your other TikTok too. Like, why, so would you, why are you doing like <laughs> six separate things? But anyway, yeah, you can just find me mostly on Peyton Sarden. Awesome. Everywhere. Well, be sure to subscribe to this channel. You guys know where to follow me. TK's Juicy Pulls and everything. And make someone's day this week. Bye, Bye. y'all. Love you. <laughs>